Hi, good day. So for today, we are going to talk about the Pearson R correlation. Now, Pearson R correlation is one of the ways on how we can determine the relationship between two different variables. And when we say relationship here, we are referring to either direct, that is when one increases, the other one also increases, and when one decreases, the other one also decreases, or inverse, that is when one increases, the other one decreases, and vice versa. Now, Pearson R correlation can only be used if the variables or if the two data, two sets of data that we have are normally distributed, which means that Pearson R correlation is a type of parametric test, those types of test or statistical tools that assumes normal distribution. And because in Pearson R correlation, the data that we have or the variables that we have assumes normal distribution, then the most appropriate level of measurement or the most appropriate scale that we are going to use here is under interval or ratio scale. Now, what if, for example, our data, our data is not or our two sets of variables are not in interval or ratio scale? Is it? Um, appropriate to use the Pearson R correlation to correlate those two uh, different variables? No. Let's say, for example, our data is in nominal scale. Nominal scale. Let's say, for example, we want to correlate um, gender and political view. Both gender and political view are actually under the nominal scale only. And because of that, we cannot use Pearson R correlation to correlate them or to find their rela uh, relationship. Okay? However, we can use chi-square to find their relationship. Okay. Now, what if, for example, we have interval or ratio scale, but the two data or the two variables that we have is not normally are not normally distributed? Can Pearson R correlation be used in, uh, in those instances? No, we cannot use Pearson R correlation. Instead, we can use the non-parametric counterpart of Pearson R correlation, and that is the Spearman's row correlation, which we are going to talk next meeting. Okay. But for this one, let's give here an example of um, a data which uh, we can actually use the Pearson R correlation. So let's say, for example, we want to correlate the mathematics and physics. Okay. Is it true that when you are good in mathematics, you are also good in physics? So for you to be able to answer this, what you did was you correlate or you try to correlate the mathematics grade and physics grade. Is it true that every time... Um, the mathematics grade increases, the physics grade also increases, and vice versa. So, let's see. So, for that one, we have here the mathematics and physics correlation. For that one, let's say you obtained five subjects or five samples. Now, with these five samples, we labeled them A, B, C, D, E. We obtained their mathematics, both their mathematics and physics grade. Let's say, for example, the subject A or the sample A has a grade of 80 in mathematics. That is our X. Okay, mathematics is our X here. And has a grade of 79 in physics. That is our Y. Okay? Uh, subject B has a grade of 77 in mathematics and uh, has a grade of 83 in physics. So, that again, physics is our Y, mathematics are X, and so on and so forth. Now, as you have noticed here... As you have noticed here, both the grades of uh, both the grades in mathematics and physics um, only came from the same subject or the same set of sample, and therefore these samples are dependent samples. Again, these are dependent samples because our data here from mathematics and physics came from the same set of samples or the same sets uh, a set of persons. Okay, so. Let's assume that these data here, the mathematics data and the physics data, are both normally distributed. Now, because we want to correlate them, we have here two data, two different variables that we want to correlate, and these two are assumed to be normally distributed. Then we can use the Pearson R correlation to find their relationship. Okay? So we have here also the row total, uh, that the row total, uh, like, for mathematics, we summed up these values, 80 plus 77 plus 93, uh, and so on and so forth. And our total here is 425 for x. And for y, we have here 79 plus 83 plus 95. We summed up uh, these values, and we have here 432. Now, we before we proceed to the computation proper, uh, there are actually three... Uh, side computations that we need to do first. Okay, number one, uh, we need to find the product of x and y. Okay, second, we need to find the square of x. And third, we need to find the 
square of y. So let's have these data here. Okay. So for the first one, we need to find the product of x and y so we have here 80 times 79 and that is 6320 77 times 83 and we have here 6391 and so on and so forth and then we uh we totaled them we summed up them and we have here 36857 okay for the x squared that is the square of uh, each of these values okay so we have here the square of 80 and that is 6400 square of 77 and that's 509 uh, 5929 and so on and so forth same with y for the y we have here 79 for 36 we have 79 square and that is 6241 83 square is 6889 and so on and so forth and we total them or we we get their summation or the their total and we have here 86,295 for x square and 37,468 for the y square okay now again we assumed that these data these two variables here are normally distributed okay now let's proceed to the formula for the pearson r correlation now, this is the formula for the Pearson R correlation. We have here R is equal to the summation or total of, mul uh, total of the product of X and Y minus the summation of X multiplied to the summation of Y. X is our mathematics grade. Y is our physics grade over the N, which is actually the number of samples or number of subjects. In this case, because we have here five subjects or five samples here, five dependent samples here, then our N here is five over the square root of summation of x square summation of x square so we have here the x square okay and the summation of of all uh, these values are 36295 okay so ito yon okay minus the summation of x square okay summation of x then e square natin summation of x is 425 then e square natin now the difference between the summation of x square um, and the summation of x tapos quantity square is that here, okay, we squared first each individual value here. Okay, so let's say our x here is, is mathematics grade, right? So here in this one, in this formula here, we, squ uh, we squared first these values. So 80 squared, 77 squared, 93 squared, and then we, uh, we added them to come up with 36,295. But here in summation of x, quantity squared, we added first or we summed up first the values in x, okay, which will lead to 425. And then we, we are going to square that 425. Uh, sorry, that 425, okay? Over the n, okay, multiplied to summation of y squared minus summation of y quantity square over n okay we're in n here means again number of subjects or sample and the uh this one the sigma here the sigma sign here represents total or sum okay now let's use this uh, this formula to find our r our pearson r so so this is now our computation here okay this is our formula again for the r Okay. Our n here is 5 because there are 5 samples where the grades are obtained. Okay, So there are 5 samples. Let's go back to that one. There are actually 5 samples where, the, where these grades are obtained. Now, uh, what we are going to do here is to just substitute the values from, these, uh, from this table to this formula. So our summation of x, y here or the product of x and y. So that is the product of x and uh, these are the products of x and y. And the summation or the total for this uh this column is 36857 so we are going to write here 36857 minus summation of x summation of x is 425 summation of y is 432 we are going to multiply these two values over 5 over square root of uh summation of x square so our x square here is is 30 uh, 6,400, 5,929, and so on and so forth. And the summation or total for the x square is, for, sorry, for the x square is 36,295. And we are going to uh, substitute that um, here. Okay, minus 
summation of x, summation of x is 425, then we are going to square that over 5, multiplied to summation of y square is um, 37,468, okay, 37,468 minus summation of y which is 432, okay, 432 square over 5, and square root, uh, square root. Okay. Now you can actually go back to the uh, to this value, uh, to this table, to check our values here. Okay. Now, uh, by simplifying this equation, then we can have here r is equal to thirty six thousand eight hundred fifty seven minus one hundred eighty three thousand six hundred. That is actually the product of four hundred twenty five and four hundred thirty two. Okay. So. Yun yun, over 5 over the square root of 36,295 minus 180,625. This is actually the square of 425 over 5 multiplied to 37,468 minus 186,624. That is actually the square of 432 over 5. Now, by, sim by simplifying further this equation, then we can have here r is equal to 137, uh, 137 over the square square root of uh, 24,344 and by simplifying further this equation then we can have here r is equal to 0 0.89 now how can we have here or how can we uh, form a conclusion um, from this value uh, from this value now we have here three important concepts for us to be able to form a conclusion using this value that we obtained here okay number one um, or for the first concept is uh, talks about the sign of R. Now here it says that if R is positive, okay, it shows direct relationship. Okay, and if R is negative, then it shows inverse relationship. So again, positive R means direct relationship. That is when one increases, the other one also increases, and vice versa. And if R is negative, that is inverse relationship. That is. Um, if one increases, the other one decreases and vice versa. Okay. Now, for the values of R, if R is equal to 0 0.00 to 0 0.2, then that means there is no correlation between the two variables that we want to correlate. If R is 0 0.21 to 0 0.4 then or 40, then that means low correlation. R of 0 0.41 to 0 0.70 means... Uh, moderate correlation R of 0 0.71 to 0 0.71 to 0 0.90 means high correlation R of 0 0.91 to 0 0.99 means very high correlation and then R of 1 means perfect correlation okay the third concept is that the values of R can range only from negative 1 to positive 1 you cannot have 100 2 or whatever um, the values can only range from negative 1 to positive 1 Okay. Now, because our R here is 0 0.89, okay? 0 0.89, and that is a positive number, then that means um, mathematics and physics grade, the mathematics and physics grade, our variables here, show direct relationship because our R here is positive. Also, because our R here is 0 0.89, Okay, 0 0.89 and that is actually under the range of 0 0.71 to 0 0.9 then that means the variables that we have here the mathematics grade and physics grade show um, show high correlation okay how can we now form our, or what is now our conclusion here our conclusion here is that therefore the grades in mathematics which is our x and physics which are which is our y show direct and high correlation so that is our conclusion that is how we can use the Pearson R correlation to uh, find the relationship between two variables that are normally distributed now next meeting we are going to talk about the um, Spearman's row Spearman's row we're in for that one we are going to find the relationship between two different variables that are not normally distributed okay, so thank you for listening and good day